Hey, welcome back everyone, Don here. Today I thought I'd talk about my lift and how it's been a useful tool over the years. And my wife might say the same thing about me. Uh, it's an Atlas uh, 408 SL. It's, uh, it's about seven years old now. It uh, has a lifting capacity of 8,000 pounds. Um, it'll lift to a height of, well, an advertised height of 73 and a half inches. Um, but that's all the way up on the cables. You shouldn't leave it on the cables. You've got to let it come down on the, on the dogs that it catches on. I'll show those in a bit. Uh, that brings the bottom of the ramp down to about 65 and a half inches, um, which is still plenty. Now they make a, another lift that's a, a few hundred dollars less expensive than this. Um, but in this case, this lift had uh, some features on it that I felt were worth the, you know, the extra few hundred dollars. The dealer that I purchased this from uh, is local to me. So I had a buddy who had a trailer large enough to haul it. Atlas does make a lift, and I don't have the model number handy, but Atlas makes a lift that is uh, one step uh, uh, less expensive than this one. The lifting capacity is the same, but the bigger difference is the manual release arms are on the outside and on this lift, they're on the inside. So they're a little less um, exposed. You can't trip on them. You can't, um, you know, they're just a little less exposed that way. It's a cleaner look. I kind of like that better. Um, but it's more important that you can't trip on them, step on them, catch tools and stuff on them and, and damage them in some way. So they're pretty well protected inside. One of the other uh, differences is that the, the, Spacing in between these holes is is closer. This one has 13 different positions you can lock it in, and the other lift only had nine. One of the biggest questions that everybody always has is, how about ceiling height? What kind of ceiling height do you need to have a lift uh, for it to be useful? And in my case, I've got an 18 foot ceiling height to the very top, so I don't really have an issue. I can put my Jeep on this and go all the way up with it, which is, you know, really convenient. Um, but you don't need that. I know, uh, I know some folks who have a similar type setup and their ceiling height is, is only about 10 foot, 10 foot six, something like that. And they can put a car on top and a car underneath. Uh, it really depends on what kind of car you have too. Some of the requirements for this lift were that the concrete had to be four inches thick and it had to withstand 3,000 PSI, which I guess is a concrete rating, I think is pretty standard anyway. Um, this thing weighs by itself 1,800 pounds. Uh, add another 4,000 pounds of car on top of it and, you know, the posts are pushing down pretty hard. So uh, the concrete has to be able to withstand that weight over a period of time too, especially if you're using it to store uh, a car on for the entire winter. Doesn't require uh, bolting down. Without having it bolted down, that allows you to take advantage of the optional caster sets that I don't, I didn't opt to buy those when I bought my lift. Um, there's a, a, an optional set of casters that pin on to the bottom of each leg. And when you lower the ramps down on top of that, those casters, they lift each post up and it allows you to roll the thing around however you need to. Um, I didn't bother doing that, I didn't feel the need. Another option that I didn't get was the jack assembly that sort of goes in between the two ramps and allows you to jack up one end of the car while it's on the ramp, while it's on the lift. And uh, I opted not to get that either. It's, uh, it was a bit pricey, so I passed. Um, because the lift does come with a jacking tray which is a steel tray that rides in between the ramps and allows you to put a jack uh, on that tray to jack up the front of the car. And while that jacking tray is useful and it does its job, uh, depending on the car you have on the lift, um, you, know, you gotta get pretty creative sometimes in finding a solution to be able to jack the car up the way you need it to. Um, but that said, were, you know, there were times where I wish I had had that uh, optional jack um, but not having it, you know, wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, the other thing that this comes with is these, uh, these plastic trays, which obviously 
are doing their job, you can see that that one's pretty, uh, pretty grindy. Um, it comes with four of them, and, and they're basically drip trays. So when you park the car up on top of this thing, it's not going to drip, um, you know, fluid from the car as it sits onto the car below that you might that you might park underneath. So it's just riding the rail. And you can slide them back and forth and put them wherever you need them. cables and that's not ideal it, I don't want to leave it hanging off the cables and so once I get it up past that last that last notch on this on this rail I, I lower it so the pressure so the pressure is on this now not on the cable system so this is underneath it this is you know this is my eye level This is the jacking tray. You can put a jack on top of this and use it to lift the car off its wheels once it's on here. It's just a chunk of steel that uh, rides on the edge of, of each one of the uh, ramps. Slide back and forth. Uh, when I want to jack up a car on the lift, I can put a bottle jack in here. Sometimes I can even put a, a small floor jack in here um, but that only allows me to lift up one side, not the other. But a bottle jack is perfect. Um, I keep some steel plates um, kicking around, some old 2x6s, 2x4s, whatever. It's, you know, just kind of get creative. Now, I have this piece of plywood here that I've cut to fit in between the two rails. And that allows me to put my drain bucket here so when I'm doing an oil change, so here's the underneath, here's the cable system. It's just one big piston. And, and of course the pulley system, which the cables run to each uh, post. When I assembled this, I had the option of putting the motor on any post I wanted. And I chose this one just because it's towards the power and it's out of the way. In order to get the lift to come down, I have to lift it up first to get it off of the hooks. <laughs> Once it's up a little bit, I can grab a handle and then lower it down. One of the things that I've got to watch out for is if I let this up just a little bit, it'll, it'll catch. Now, worse yet, if I let, if I let this off just a little bit, I let this off just a little bit and, and uh, only one corner catches. Now I've got a scenario where the lift is going to tilt or tip one, uh, one way or the other, and that's not good. So it's really important to um, manage this properly. So the ramps just hook on these bolts right here are just kind of loose. They're, they're not holding anything, but the, the ramps have slots in them on the end. And to put the ramp up, you just hook it on. And now it's on there solid. There's no way it's going to fall off as you're driving on and off. Another cool feature of this ramp setup um, is that these ramps, when I'm storing my car up all winter, I can also store the ramps um, so they're not in the way. I just have to put them, just have to put them up on here. Like that. Put the other one the same. Now, the only 
problem with that is when the car, in order to put <laughs> in order to put the ramps there, you have to have the car already up on the lift. And so they're a bit fiddly to get up from underneath. So after the first couple of years, I discovered that my ramps were actually starting to cause a little damage on my garage floor. You can see here where the ramp would sit. Um, it would rock and, and, and it's slowly making marks in the floor. What I did to prevent that was I put this orange fuel line on the edge of the ramp and uh, kind of helps cushion the ramps as the car is coming up and onto the lift. I have to replace that piece of fuel line every once in a while because it does wear out, but you know, every three years or so. So it's been a pretty good solution. So the only real complaint, and it's not really a complaint, it's more of a compromise, um, is that because this lift is not a commercial lift, it's not designed to go up and down 10 times, 20 times a day. It's more considered a hobbyist type of lift. And uh, as a result of that, it's, it's pretty slow. checking it out. If I missed anything, be sure to leave a comment and I'll get back to you and we'll see you in the next one.